Growing up, I was bullied. I also witnessed a lot of other people being bullied, and sometimes I even participated in the bullying myself. I'm sure a lot of you have had similar experiences. When we talk about bullying, we often pretend that it's only a problem for kids or teenagers, and that it magically disappears once you reach a certain age. But the truth is, it doesn't. Many adults continue to bully each other, and sometimes adults even bully kids and teenagers. It can happen for a variety of reasons, but it often comes down to the fact that they haven't discovered confidence. So I'm going to talk to you today about a few ways that you can work to start discovering confidence you didn't know you had, and then how you can use that confidence to work against bullying, whether you're the victim, the witness, or the instigator or participator in the bullying yourself, and how you can develop habits and take them with you into adulthood. When I was bullied, it was sexual in nature. I was just 11 years old when my then boyfriend and his friends started rumors about me, and spread them throughout our school and the town. I was labeled the school slut, and that reputation stuck with me for a few years. I was able to overcome it, and I moved on. And to be honest, I didn't think much about it for over a decade. That is until this past spring. When I heard about a girl who had committed suicide at the age of 17, she had been gang raped by her classmates. Pictures of the attack had been spread on social media, and as a result of the trauma of the rape and the sexual bullying that followed, she had decided to take her own life. It wasn't the first story like that that I had heard, and it really resonated with me because even though thankfully I was never the victim of a rape. I had considered suicide, and I'd written about it in my diaries while I was going through the sexual bullying. I remember going down to my parents' basement in New England in the winter, and sitting there hoping and praying that I would freeze to death, so that it would look like an accident and my parents wouldn't blame themselves for my death. So hearing the stories. About people who didn't survive that time and who did go through with taking their own lives, inspired me to start the Unslut Project. It started simply as a blog of my own diary entries from when I was going through this sexual bullying, and soon other women and girls wanted to contribute their own stories. So it's expanded into this wonderful, supportive online community. For story sharing and starting conversations to work toward change. My project deals specifically with sexual bullying, but the steps I'm going to talk about today, toward discovering and using confidence, can be applied to all different types of bullying, whether it's physical or verbal, or whether it happens online. So first, let's talk about how. You can discover confidence because it seems like something that's easier said than done. The first step is pretty simple. Do what you like. Identify something that you're good at, and focus on it. It could be making artwork. It could be playing a musical instrument or a sport. Maybe you're really good at graphic design. Most importantly, it should be something that you turn to when you've had a bad day and you're feeling really down. Something that you like doing, and that you're kind of good at, and you want to get better at. So, after a stressful day at school, if you just want to go into your room and mess around on your guitar, that's it for you. For me, it was singing. I'd always kind of liked the sound of my own voice, and. <laughs> I was lucky because I had parents who enrolled me in voice lessons and encouraged me to audition for musical theater productions. I loved performing, and I loved getting better at something that I liked doing. By setting up chances for ourselves to get progressively better at something that we're already kind of good at and that we like spending time doing, we set up opportunities to discover confidence. The next step. Is to set goals. Now, these could be long-term goals. It's always good to have long-term goals and aspirations, but it's important to have short-term, attainable goals that you can meet on a daily basis. They can be related to whatever you identified in the first point, 
Um, or they can be social or family-oriented or academic in nature. For instance, there's probably, at any given time, something you should be studying for, whether it's a standardized test or college placement exams, or maybe you're writing a paper and you should really start the research for that paper. So set aside just an hour or 20 minutes a day that you commit to studying for that test or to researching that paper. When you do that, not only will you get better at whatever topic you're learning about, but you'll boost your own self-esteem. You'll discover confidence in yourself to set goals and to accomplish those goals that you put your mind to setting. So I told you I kept a diary growing up. I always loved writing, but I was never very good at math. And especially algebra was really hard for me. So I committed to just setting aside 20 minutes a day, when in addition to whatever homework I was assigned in algebra class, I would study the concepts that I was having the most trouble wrapping my head around in the textbook. And I would get better at it. I would understand it. That was my goal. I did get a little better at algebra. I started doing better on the tests. But most importantly, I discovered confidence in myself to accomplish goals on a daily basis. Every time I studied for just those 20 minutes, it didn't matter so much what I was learning as much as I was accomplishing that task that I had set out to do. It sounds simple, but it really helped me discover confidence. Finally, and most importantly, in my opinion, is to practice kindness. First of all, practice kindness toward yourself. If, for whatever reason, you're unable to meet that goal you set that day, don't beat yourself up. Give yourself a break. We all have bad days. But even on your worst days, when you feel you're most powerless, you always have the power to make someone else's day a little bit better, and you can do that by practicing kindness. You can practice kindness um, in all different kinds of scenarios. For instance, if you go into Starbucks, think about the baristas, okay? They've been there all day. They've seen hundreds of customers, most of whom are in a rush or kind of cranky about something or other. You can be the difference. Just take a moment and smile and say genuinely, thank you, you're doing a great job. It's that easy. You just practiced being kind, and you made their day a little bit better. You can also practice uh, kindness in class. The next time someone raises their hand to participate in class discussion in a way that you think is really clever or made you think about the topic in a new way, tell them so, either in front of everyone or after class when you're packing up your things. It can be really nerve-wracking to participate in class, as many of us know, and your words of kindness could be the reassurance that they need, that their words, their opinion, is worth speaking up about. You have the power to do that. So just by practicing kindness, you can constantly remind yourself how powerful you are to change someone else's day just a little bit. And through that process, you'll discover confidence in yourself. So now you've identified something you're kind of good at already, you want to get better at, and you like doing. You're spending time focusing on that, good. You've set goals, and you're working to meet those goals on a regular basis. Good. And you're getting a little more comfortable practicing kindness. By the way, practicing kindness can be kind of uncomfortable at first. Not because we're not kind people. I'm sure everyone in this room is a really kind person. Just because we're not expected to outwardly demonstrate kindness, especially not towards strangers. But you get more comfortable with it, and it becomes a habit, as do all these things that you can take with you into adulthood. Soon you're going to start discovering confidence. But what do you do with that confidence? How do you use it once you've discovered it? Well, here are some ways to use your confidence, specifically with regard to working against bullying. The first and most obvious way is if you are a victim of the bullying yourself. You can't control what other people say about you what they think about you, or how they act toward you. But you can control how you react to it. So whether the bullying you're suffering from is physical in nature, as we often see in depictions of bullying, or verbal, or whether it happens online, if you've discovered confidence in your own skills, in your own ability to set goals and work toward them, and your own power to be kind to others, you're going to be a lot less affected by others' opinions of you. 
Now, working against bullying obviously takes a lot of institutional support from teachers and from community leaders and from your parents, if, if you are lucky to have parents like I did. But you can control your own personal reaction so that the bullying is not as emotionally devastating as it might be otherwise. You're not stupid. You're not ugly. You're not a slut. You're pretty good at the guitar. You're getting progressively better at algebra. And you're kind. You're a kind person. Once you have that deep knowledge about yourself, you'll be a lot less affected. If you're lucky enough to not be a victim of bullying, you can use the confidence you discovered as a witness when you see bullying happen to someone else. So if you're on Twitter and your timeline starts filling up with all these nasty, mean tweets all directed toward one person, interrupt that stream of negativity with a kind tweet. You've been practicing kindness, and now's your time to use it. You have the power to do that. It's scary to stand up for someone when they're being bullied, because it puts you at risk of being bullied yourself. And it's awkward, especially if the people you're standing up to are your own friends. But once you've discovered confidence in yourself, you can share it with others. You can share it with the people who are being victimized. And you can protect yourself if you do become a target as a result of sticking up for them. Finally, and this is the hardest issue to confront when it comes to bullying, you can use the kindness and, and that you've been practicing and the confidence that you've discovered to work against bullying when you find the temptation in yourself to bully others. Think about the last time you were really mean or cruel to someone. Chances are you weren't feeling too great about yourself at the time, whether or not you recognized it. When you're confident in your own skills and your own talents and your own ability to set goals and work toward meeting those goals, and your own power to be kind, to use your kindness, you're a lot less likely to put someone else down to make yourself feel better, because you don't need to. Now, hearing the stories about girls and boys who've killed themselves as a result of bullying made me wonder, why wasn't that me? What was different? What happened in my life that allowed me to not only survive that horrible period, but to go on and be happy and fulfilled in my life. There were lots of outside forces at play that I'm not responsible for, that I was lucky to be exposed to. But what I was in control of, I realized, was that I had discovered confidence. I continued singing. I got progressively better at it. I still love doing it. I recently earned my master's degree in voice performance, and I've performed internationally. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still not very good at algebra <laughs> or math generally, but the skills that I developed setting goals and working toward them have helped me in other areas of my life. And finally, I'm not always a ray of sunshine, but I do practice kindness on a daily basis. I use every interaction as an opportunity to practice being kind. And I continue to discover confidence in myself as an adult. You can do this too. I encourage you to think about the ways in which you can start discovering confidence and using it to work against bullying, whether you're a victim, a witness, a bully yourself, or all three of these things at different points, which is the case for most of us. You can discover confidence, and you can use it, and you can start now. Thank you.